Okay, hello everyone. Uh, I know it's the last talk before the Mardi Gras party, so I appreciate everyone coming here. Uh, I would like to say about Crossplay, peer-to-peer, and Unreal Engine. It's easier said than done. Uh, so yeah, let's go. Uh, the Crossplay feature uh, is more and more welcomed by players, but it's still not a standard yet, uh, especially when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer and un Unreal Engine. We tried that for our riders and somehow succeeded. Uh, so this talk is kind of a post-mortem as well as overview things we had to overcome in order to, uh, to get there. A few words of introduction. My name is Jarosław Palczyński. I am a project tech lead at People Can Fly for Gemini Project. Uh, during Outriders production, I was online lead programmer, so I was very close to the technology I'm presenting today. I'm in the gaming industry for nine years, and that included uh, Epic Games Adventure. Uh, if anyone wants to contact me, here is my email address. Okay, so who are we as people can fly? Uh, we are in the um, industry of game development for over 20 years. Uh, we are doing mostly shooters. Um, we started with Painkiller, then Bulletstorm, after that was Gears of War Judgment, and most recently, Outriders, which inspired this talk. Mm. Uh, there are 600 of us, and we like to think of ourselves as Unreal Engine experts. Uh, we are across the globe, uh, in Europe, United States, and Canada. Mm. Currently, we have seven projects in the making, and we are a public company on Warsaw Stock Exchange. Okay. Um, everything I'm presenting today is not a work of any single person, but rather a group of people. Uh, almost everything implementation-wise was done by collaboration of PCF's online programming team and Square Enix online suite team, so huge thanks to those guys. Also, I would like to thank to PCF and Square Enix leadership and production for making this bold decision. It wasn't easy. Also, I'd like to thank the QA teams that had to test all this, this Frankenstein we have created. Okay, so let's start. Ideally, the, the process of implementing the uh, crossplay features should be stretched across whole production. So I will start from prerequisites then I will move to technological layer. Then I will try to cover what it takes to certify uh, the game with crossplay. Um, and I, I would like to summarize with uh, takeaways, so things I, would, I think you should take home with you from this. Hopefully, we'll have some time for Q&A after that. And before we go, um, a bit of motivation, why we did that. So we kind of expected that this feature will be warmly welcomed, but when we announced that this, that this feature is in our game, the number of praises we got was uh, amazing. So I think that in recent future, this should be a standard. Okay, so first things first. Uh, how to approach this problem? How to implement crossplay in your game? First thing to define the problem. Uh, please remember that uh, every, uh, every platform you add to your platform set increases the complexity of the problem. Uh, it increases with the square of a number of platforms. And you actually would have to test all those configurations. Um, then you should consider the design. For example, some PvP games might suffer from the differences between default controls that are on different platforms, right? For example, PC has a keyboard-mouse combo by default, and uh, consoles have gamepad. Some players might think that it's unfair for them to compete with the keyboard and mouse, right? Then you need to somehow design the user experience. How my players would connect to the players on the other side, on the other platform. Uh, can I do only join codes? Perhaps I need to cross-platform friends. 
And it's also, it's, it's more complicated than it sounds. Maybe just matchmaking will suffice. All those things are, by default, created by the platform itself, and, uh, and you will have to do it yourself. Um, then, please make sure you get platform owner's approvals before you invest a lot of time and money implementing that feature. The crossplay is not allowed out of the box everywhere, almost anywhere it's, it's not allowed, so you need to approach the platforms and ask if, it's, if they allow it or if they like your design. <clears throat> the most notable things they might, um, they might think that they don't want you to have it is our security reasons. For example, your game might be exposing too much data to the other platforms and they, they promise their players to not expose this data, right? Um, and the second thing is fair share versus monetization problem. Um, but I will talk a bit, I will dwell a bit about this. Okay, so fair share versus monetization problem. Let's imagine we have two platforms, A and B, and both of them is, are taking one third as their margin. Uh, on both of those platforms, there are players X and Y. Uh, both of them are buying your title, uh, and basically, $20 from both of those players are coming to your treasury, and $10 goes to each of those platforms, right? That is the largely the business model, and it seems fair. Um, you're, let's imagine you are adding a microtransaction item to, to your title. Uh, you are pricing it at $3, player X is, is buying that item, so $1 goes to Ace Treasury, $2 goes to yours. It's still fair, right? Yeah, well, that depends. It depends on the features you have implemented in your game in your cross-platform interface. If there's any way microtransaction content can be transferred to the other platform uh, uh, through your cross-play mechanism, it, it might be a violation and platform owners might not like it. A few examples of, of this problem, of, of violation of, of this rule. For example, if you have uh, DLC sharing, which means basically that only one person in the party uh, has to own the content in order for everyone to play it. it. It is a violation from this point of view. Also, if you have microtransaction items with cross-progression uh, cross or cross-safe. Even if this is the same person, but with account on another platform, uh, you shouldn't allow for those items to cross over unless you get approval for that from the platform owner. It's the same with micro microtransactions items with in-game trading, and probably a lot more that I haven't anticipated here. Okay, so to summarize that, please do not wait until the last moment for those approvals. It might be a process and a negotiation. It's not, uh, and, it, and it varies from title to title and platform to platform. Um, the best way to go forward is you need to find a common design that works for everyone. And please remember, this is uncharted territory for everyone, for people, for processes, for those platforms. The, there are no standards here for everyone. Okay, and once we have those prerequisites, now we can focus on the technological layer. So, what do you need to implement the crossplay from technological point of view in peer-to-peer -peer Unreal Engine game? You need to know how to establish low latency connection between Unreal uh, game clients. And Unreal assumes UDP protocol, so everything you implement needs to mimic that. Then you need to build all the bits and pieces of uh, the backend structure in order to support, uh, support this design. Mm. Also, you need to identify and address all the differences in hardware that might jeopardize the user experience. For example, in Outriders, we had issues when players on prev-gen hardware were hosting a game that next-gen uh, next players 
uh, join it too. Players notice that, that their experience is significantly worse than, on pre uh, than if it was the other way around, and they complain about that. We tried to address that, but we couldn't fix that for every case. Okay, so how to establish low latency connection between platforms? Um, in debug environments, straight IP connection will probably work, but it won't work in retail. There are two main reasons for that. One is that the situation when players are playing from within the same LAN network are extremely rare, so we need to have some kind of NAT traversal implemented. The second are security reasons. Platform owners might not like that you're exposing uh, IP of the other players. Uh, it's, it's extremely easy from PC, if you have straight connection to the platform, uh, to the console, to be able to see the other person's uh, personal IP address. And if you are unlucky, it might be easily, uh, easily uh, connected with the personal address. Connect that with frustration players might get in your game and you, you might be in trouble. So what is the solution? The, the relay servers. So basically, what is a relay server? Uh, let's imagine again that you have two platforms, A and B, and players X and Y. They both are playing your game, and they want to somehow play together, so they need to connect. They are trying straight connection, but it fails from various firewalls and other paranoid things IT is doing to make us safer. So you introduce a middle service that is neutral to both of those platforms and is just passing the packets to the other side. Uh, this kind of relay server is fairly cheap to operate. And by cheap, I mean it can ho one virtual machine should be able to host of tens of thousands of players. And it's, and it's, as far as I know, it's the only way to achieve that, uh, to reliably achieve this connection. Okay, so how to implement those relays? You have a, a few options. One is to, to implement it yourself. But it is, it's simple in theory, but it's actually hard to implement. Because to, uh, to spare uh, a bit of money and latency time that they will increase, um, you would like to be able to fall back to straight connection if the circumstance allows it. For example, uh, with connection from PC to PC. And implementing NAT tra traversal um, is a very complicated task, task on its own. So I would highly recommend to base your solution on some uh, some standard. The, the, the problem isn't new, it was solved for a lot of different applications, so you just need to take and adapt it. For Outriders, we used WebRTC as a client and Cotern servers as Stuntern servers. Also, to support that, you need some way of out-of-band signaling for channel negotiation. Basically, both of the players need to somehow negotiate and identify themselves without actually exposing their personal IP address. Uh, when you do this, you need to trick Unreal to use it as a socket. Um, for Outriders, we, um, we took a stream socket and modified it to implement it this way. But there are a few traps if, if, you, do this, if you do this this way. For example, we had Mm, the most notable issue we had was um, that uh, the increase in latency I mentioned earlier was even higher than we anticipated. Uh, it turned out that WebRTC by default, at least our implementation, was adding reliability and ordering of packets. If you remember from previous slides, Unreal is assuming UDP connection, so no reliability, no, uh, no ordering was required. So basically, we're paying the price in latency 
uh, for nothing, basically. Once we disabled that, everything went back to normal. So my recommendation is to use something out there. For example, Epic Online Services has free service that will allow you to do a straight peer-to-peer -peer connection. And I, I assume that there is some kind of online uh, subsystem that supports that. OK, and as I mentioned, there's no free lunch. So if you have those relay servers, and there's probably, at least I don't know of any way around it, you will need to pay operational money unless you pick something free like Epic Online Services, but then they are paying the bill uh, to keep the servers running and possibly evenly distributed across the globe because you want to have them as close as possible to players. And there is a pay to, uh, price to pay in latency time because after all, it's one hop more for every packet. Okay, now uh, we covered the low latency connection, so now we can move to backend features. So what do you need from backend point of view in order to support the crossplay? You need, as I mentioned, you need some way of signaling if you if you'd like to implement a low latency connection yourself. Uh, but even if you decide to go with something uh, already there, uh, it's a useful feature uh, that will also help you with other features like uh, cross-plane invites, etc. What is signaling? Basically, it's a way of sending a message, straight message from platform X to Y on different platforms. Uh, without too much latency, but it's not low latency as we need for active gameplay, but it also can be an email. We are talking seconds here. So in this example, player X is, is sending, uh, hey, I want to connect to you to player Y. Um, the easiest way to approach that would be to send this message and store it in your backend database somehow and let player Y to pull it when it's needed. But in order to get, for example, one second latency, you would need to constantly pull your database uh, every second. And multiply that uh, by the number of players playing your game and you put a serious load on your database just to achieve that. So, in my opinion, it's not the solution. So, how to, uh, how to get there? Uh, yeah, periodical pulling will kill your backend. You can soften the blow by sacrificing user experience because you could increase the, um, increase the time between pulls, but then you would get less responsiveness. So the alternative is there are technologies that will let uh, your, back, uh, your client be connected to your backend and receive push notifications. Um, for example, one is server-side events, and this is what we use for Outriders, but you can also use WebSockets or SignalR. So now player Y is only registering in your backend that it's waiting on messages. Then if you send a message from X to Y, your backend receives that message, process, it's processing it right away and sending it immediately to Y. So, Y receives message almost immediately without putting too much load on your database. Okay, we've covered signaling. So now it's time for cross-platform uh, friends. But it's, it seems easy at first glance, but it's, it's really more complicated than it seems. So again, let's imagine the scenario of two platforms, right? Players X and Y on different platforms, on platform A and B. Traditionally, you can have in-game friends from within only the platform you are playing on. So player X can only be friends with player Z, and player Y can only be friends with player W. Mm, how we can change that? The obvious solution would be to add the centralized database where you store the uh, friends from the other platform. And to make things simpler, you just uh, store every friend in your database and only sync those from, from uh, respective platforms. 
Okay, but, but uh, what actually to store in that database? Can you store personal data? Probably you can't because there are platform policies, uh, there are GDPR laws, etc. Can you store platform's internal ID? Yeah, you can, but most often you can't display it. It doesn't make any sense to players, and it's internal for a reason. So it's, it's hard for you to identify offline players that aren't playing your game. Can you store the display ID? In theory, you can, but players have rights to change it, right? So you would need to somehow detect that the player on the other platform has changed the display ID while your game was down and update it somehow. So for outwriters, we stored internal ID of the platforms, but we shown only online players in terms they were playing our, our game. This let us ask uh, the game on the other side to provide us the correct display ID. I think the hybrid of storing internal ID and display ID could also work, but then you would need to somehow reliably update this information and then show it to players. Okay, so that's basically cross-platform friends. Matchmaking. Matchmaking is pretty obvious, but there's one problem. You can't plan to use platform owners matchmaking, so, because it won't work across the boundaries, right? So there are a few external providers you could use. We used PlayFab, but there are others. What else? I'd recommend you to implement join codes if you plan to have crossplay. Uh, the, the, the idea is simple. Um, you're just basically generating a code on the back end. This code is uh, associated with your internal ID and player receives that code. When a player uh, sends that code with other means, for example, text or email or something to the other side, then the person on the other side can use that code to identify you and the system can uh, associate you both together as friends. Uh, there's always this trade-off or of the, the length of the join code versus uh, the expiration time. So I would recommend to keep the join codes short because uh, the, longer short, uh, the longer codes, the, the less useful they are uh, and people will, won't use them if they are pretty long. And last but not least, the voice chat. Uh, um, you can't rely on platform systems. So you can't say, um, hey, we recommend you to, to use just platforms voice chat because players expect uh, voice chat to work as long as they're in the same party. So, uh, and implementing the voice chat yourself is extremely uh, complicated because of the CVAA Act uh, of US law uh, that requires you to uh, provide speech-to-text transcription in, uh, if you have voice chat implemented. Uh, it's, it's extremely complicated to implement the speech-to-text transition, so again, I would recommend to pick something, pick something out there. Mm. I would recommend to use PlayFab or Vivox. You could use Epic Online Services, but unfortunately, as, as of today, Epic doesn't have uh, speech-to-text transcription. So if you used Epic Online Services, you would need to hook you, yourself to speech-to-text in order to pass this law. Okay, that concludes the technological layer. Now we can move to the favorite thing of all the developers, certification. So how does multi-platform certification look like? There is a point in time when you think your game is good enough to be certified, right? You're sending this version to platform A as a RC0 candidate, and you are doing the same with platform B, right? Uh, and depending on certification windows, both of those certifications might happen in parallel. Certification teams will try to break your game, 
and platform A couldn't break your game. So this is a success. So far, so good. But things get interesting when platform B feedback is fail, and you can't convince them otherwise. You, you need to implement the feedback no matter what. So you are implementing the feedback. You have platform B's RC1. You are res rescheduling the certification. After the certification says it's success, uh, you think you can ship the game, right? Yeah, not so fast. Let's first test if the platform B uh, gold is compatible with platform A gold build. And it turns out that it, it isn't compatible because you implemented some feature or, or some feedback and now those two can't talk to each other. Okay, now what? You could redo the process for A. You could re-implement all those changes for you did for platform B and platform A and hope that it will regain the compatibility. But the certification windows are often busy and you will have a deadline. And when you redo the process for A, so you re-implement those changes, you need to recertify again, right? right? And even if you think that you can squeeze in and uh, certify those changes for those two platforms, it's, it's unrealistic to think that uh, the things will go so smoothly across, for example, I don't know, seven platforms or something, whatever number you will pick. So it is not a sustainable solution. So what to do then? You need to somehow manage the compatibility of your builds. Basically, your game needs to know if it can talk to the version um, on, the other, uh, on the other platform, right? But you can't hard code that information because you only learn that A is incompatible with B after A was certified. Yeah, so basically you can't keep a list of comp compatible versions in the build. So you need another feature. Uh, we used something we called matchmaking buckets, but with time it gained value, so we renamed it to compatibility buckets. Um, generally, the idea is that during login, uh, getting your build ID, you are getting uh, your bucket name from the backend. Uh, and your game can, talk, can only talk to games with, in the same uh, compati uh, compatibility bucket, and that includes join codes, matchmaking, etc. With that, we could keep, for example, A and B platform in one compatibility, compatibility bucket and C and D in the second compatibility bucket. And after we, we updated C and D, we could put them back together uh, without too much of a hassle. Okay, so basically that concludes my talk. So uh, please pay attention right now because uh, I know that some of those things might, left, might be soon left from your head, but I would like you to remember those few things. This is a list of my recommendations for you if you want to implement crossplay. Uh, cross Plan the feature early. Don't do our mistakes to add platform on the last mile, right? It's, it's very hard. It might change your design and flip the table, so please don't do it. This is a pretty obvious mantra, but, but it seems like mm, you needed to know the platform set early because platforms seems like similar, but they really aren't, especially in the matchmaking, uh, connectivity, friends area. You need to work with the design and platform vendors early. In, on, in order to get the, uh, the acceptable design. You, you probably don't have the gravity to convince platforms to do differently. If they think that if they have some different plan uh, with the crossplay feature, they might just not allow it for you. And negotiating deals, it's hard. So pick a provider for a feature whether, wherever it's possible. Implementing cross platform features is very hard. So if there's something available, use it, but first verify it. Just 
just because someone advertises the feature is cross-platform, it doesn't mean it fulfills all the, um, all the laws and policies you are required to fulfill. So, and ultimately, you are responsible for, for your product. Okay, that's it. Thank you very much. And we're hiring, by the way, so if you are interested, please go here and give us a shout.